The Avalites Web API allows you to create custom interfaces to connect to your Avalites Titan lighting desks. In this video, we're going to look at first connecting and controlling your lighting desk using the Web API functionality. We're then going to discuss the different command syntaxes. And finally, we'll go through some basic functions to get you started using the Web API. So before we can do anything, we have to make sure that we have a valid network connection between the console and the computer you want to control the console from. Um, so make sure they're both connected to the same network switch, and I'll just go through setting the IP settings. So if we go into the system menu, shift disk, network settings, local area connection, and check that the IP address um, is matches that on the computer. In this case, we're using 10.10.4.106. So the, cons the computer needs to be on 10.10.4 something. Um, it's important to note that IP address 10.10.4.106 as we'll be using that later when sending commands to the console. If we now go to the computer. So we go to Control Panel, Network and Sharing Center, Change Adapter Settings, Right click on the correct network adapter for this computer and go to the IPv4 settings. And we just need to check that they're in the same subnet. This is 10.10.4.100, so they're in the same subnet, so we should be good to go. So now we just need to check that we can talk to the web API. We should have a good network set up, so I'm just going to. Um, send the API command um, and see whether it's working. One six, sorry, 106 is our IP address. 4430 is the web API port. Titan uh, get system software version. So this will just get the software version. It's a really good way to test that the API is working. As you can see, 10.1 Preview 18 is returned. That's the correct software for this version. So we're all connected and ready to go. The Overlights Web API uses HTTP request to control the console. You need to send either a GET or a POST command, depending on the command that you're sending. The HTTP request is widely supported amongst different applications and programming languages to allow you to easily create your custom panels. It also has the benefit that you can test it within any standard browser. If you want to get a list of all the commands within the web API, go to api.avalites.com, click on version 10 API, and then here's listed all of the commands. I'm just going to go through the four basic types of commands and how you use them. So we're going to start with in a web browser. The first command is um, a request command for all the handles. So we type the IP address first, 10.10.4.106, then colon the web API port, which is 4430, forward slash titan, titan is that goes on the start of all the commands. And then handles. This starts a handles request. And then we can either request playbacks, playback pages, fixture handles, whichever handles we like. So I'm going to ask for the playback handles. And a JSON <coughs> text file is returned with a list of all the playback handles. It JSON should be possible by any standard um, JavaScript or uh, um, programming language. We can fi um, finesse this slightly and go, we want playbacks on page 1. So I'll put 0, and that gives me all the playbacks on page 1. If I put 1, I'll get all the playbacks on page 2. And there aren't any playbacks on page 2, so I get nothing returned. Now. Um, Say I make a mistake and I type handles2, it will tell me and say the method isn't allowed. 
basically that means you've made a mistake and you need to correct your um, your URL. We can also get properties within the system. Um, we've already seen this, the software version. And I'm just going to do that again. And that returns the text, your software version. What you'll notice is that um, the provider goes first and then you get the parameter name. We can also set parameters by just doing set. Um, but unfortunately, this requires a post request and it's not easy to test within the browser. Um, this will be detailed in a more advanced video later. Scripts are probably one of the most useful types of commands. Um, they allow you to perform different functions within the console. So to run a script, you type script, forward slash, then playbacks, then kill all playbacks, and then enter. Now you'll notice with these that you don't get anything returned. That's because there is no return type. Um, the fact that you get nothing is a good thing. It means it's all worked correctly. So I put the wrong text in, then you get an informational error to say what was wrong. But as long as you type the script correctly, you shouldn't see anything returned. But the playbacks have been killed on the desk. Some of the commands, like, for example, kill playback, require parameters. Here you can see it requires a handle. So how do we do that? Well, let's change this to kill playback. And we're running playback 16. So you put question mark, say we want to put in a parameter, user number, which does a search for a user number, playback with the user number of five in this instance, and press enter, and now user number, playback with user number five will be killed. Uh, some also have multiple parameters. So set level, for example, on playbacks. So set playback level. That requires both a handle and a level. So we're just going to copy this in. And we need to set a handle. So user number equals 5. And we also need to set a level. So if we do level equals, and we want to set the level to full, so that would be 1. Press enter and playback user number 5 will be set to full. Set to 0, goes to not 0, no level. 0.5, go to 50% level. So now we know the structure of how commands and work and the syntax. I'm just going to run through a few of the most commonly used commands and explain how they work. The first one is to fire a playback. Um, so we're just going to copy this. Um, to save time I've um, put all the commands in Notepad, but um, you should be able to find all the information to uh, get what, which commands you need from the API documentation. So we're just going to paste this into our address bar. And um, you'll notice that um, the command is fire playback at level. What this does is um, it will set the playback level. And if the playback is not fired and the level is above zero, it will fire the playback. Um, so we're going to fire user number six, which is Q6. And we're going to set it to level one, which is full. Um, this parameter here is whether the playback is refired. Um, if the um, if the playback's already fired and you set that to true, it would reassert the LTP values. Um, we don't want to do that in this example, so we're just going to leave this to as false. 
So if I run this now, you'll see that um, Q6 has now been fired. If we want to kill it now, then we just change the level to zero, and that will kill the playback. And now the playback's been killed. Um, if we want to fire it to 50%, just set this to 0.5, and that will fire the playback at 50% intensity. Another useful command is kill all playbacks. Um, so we're just going to paste this in here. Um, and this command doesn't have any parameters. You just run it and it'll kill all the playbacks. As you can see, Q6 is now being killed. So that's enough to get a simple UI working that fires and kills playbacks. Um, I'm now going to look at Q lists and um, show you how they're a bit different. Um, for Q lists, we may need to be able to change the Q number. So I'm going to use this command, which sets the next Q number. Um, to actually fire a specific Q, there's a two step process. The first one is the set next Q. Um, so the Q list I've got is user number seven, and we want to fire. Q number 4. So if I run this now, you'll see that the next Q is now set to Q number 4. But that Q is not fired, it's not running. Uh, to actually run the playback and s the Q to send it live, I need to use the play command. And this will basically um, play whatever the next Q is um, for the Q list user number 7. And as you can see, Q number 4 has just fired. Uh, another <coughs> um, useful command is next step. This will um, basically move to the next queue and then fire it. Um, so if I run that one, you'll see it runs the next queue. And if I run it again, it will run the next queue. And so what if I want to go back to queue 2 now? I'm just going to copy this in, I'm going to set this to Q number 2, fire that, and now Q2 is, is the next Q. To actually run that Q again, I have to send this play command. And that's it.